Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We start with our last lecture on anti-cancer drugs. In our last lecture, we went through the anti-cancer antibiotics and the hormonal agents used in cancer and some important anti-cancer regimens used for the treatment of different cancers. A uh, recap of that lecture. The first question, which of the following drugs is used to protect against the side effects of doxorubicin? Uh, this was mentioned last time, the antidote of doxorubicin and donorubicin. They cause cardiotoxicity, including cardiomyopathy arrhythmias. So the answer is dexrazoxane. Yes, that is the answer. It is a chemical antagonist which binds with these drugs and causes their excretion. The other drugs mentioned are also antidotes. Folinic acid and leucovirin are the same names for the antidote given in methotrexate toxicity while mesna or mercaptoethane sulfonate sodium is the antidote given in cyclophosphamide toxicity the next question this is a scenario you have to read the whole question a patient of cancer has been taking anti-cancer medication for some months and this patient now develops dyspnea, a non-productive cough and intermittent fever. Chest x-ray reveals pulmonary infiltration. The most likely causative agent is. So this is a case of pulmonary fibrosis and the question is asking which of these anti-cancer drugs causes pulmonary fibrosis and we mentioned that in our last lecture yes the answer is bleomycin another anti-cancer antibiotic which also causes the breakup of the DNA strands by forming a DNA iron uh, bleomycin complex the next question which of the following anti-cancer drugs is not included in the MOP regimen? So this is uh, the learning objective, the different anti-cancer regimens. M, if you remember, stands for mechlorethamine, an alkylating agent. O stands for vincristine, which is um, Oncovirin, the trade name of Vincristine. The first P stands for, here mentioned, prednisone. The second P stands for Procarbazine, that is MOP regime for the treatment of which cancer? Yes, for Hodgkin's lymphoma. And the answer here is A. Doxorubicin is not among the drugs which is included in the MOP regime. Next question, ABVD regimen includes all of these drugs except um, A stands for adriamycin which is the trade name for doxorubicin, B stands for bleomycin, V stands for vinblastine and D for darcarbazine. That leaves us with vincristine, which symbols, which the symbol is O. So this ABVD regime is also used for the treatment of Hodgkin's lymphoma. CHOP regimen is used for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and CMF regimen along with tamoxifen if you remember is used for the treatment of breast cancer. 
And then this diagram was shown yesterday, the summary of the mechanisms of action of various anti-cancer drugs. Uh, again, a repetition. Number one in the diagram is the folic acid analog, which is methotrexate. Number two is the pyrimidine analog or pyrimidine antagonist which is 5-lorouracil. Number three is hydroxyurea, a ribonucleotide reductase inhibitor. Here it is given in two places. And then number four and number five, these are purine analogs or purine antagonists. Number six are the alkylating agents like cyclophosphamide, which cause the introduction of an alkyl group to the DNA. And then the anti-cancer antibiotics, which we discussed yesterday. And number eight, last of all, the mitotic spindle poisons, vincristine, vinblastine, and the others. So this is about a summary of the mechanisms. And last of all, we also discussed the hormonal agents used in the treatment of cancer. So here the question is which of the following is a hormone antagonist used to treat estrogen receptor breast cancer? So the answer is tamoxifen. That is the major drug used to treat estrogen receptor um, positive, especially um, breast cancer in males and in females. The other drugs, flutamide is a um, androgen antagonist used in prostate cancer. Methotrexate we have covered in the anti-metabolites used for various cancers but it is not a hormone agonist or antagonist. Estradiol is a hormone agonist used for the treatment of prostate cancer and oxalobacin we have mentioned is not a hormonal agent it is uh, anthracycline anti-cancer antibiotic so the learning objectives of today's lecture uh, we will be discussing the miscellaneous group of anti-cancer drugs they include the tyrosine kinase inhibitors the EGRF inhibitors and last of all the v anti -VG VEGF anti-cancer drugs. So the first of all the tyrosine kinase inhibitors. We have studied the tyrosine kinase linked enzymes in general pharmacology. Tyrosine kinase is as we know enzyme, an enzyme that causes phosphorylation of different substrates. In this case, it causes the phosphorylation of the, of the tissues which are involved in the cancer growth. So inhibit phosphorylation by tyrosine kinase enzyme in the cancer cells. And there are different um, isoenzymes involved here used for CML which stands for chronic myelocytic leukemia and for acute lymphocytic leukemia and for gastric cancers. The major adverse effect of the main tyrosine kinase inhibitor imatinib, it is um, causing edema fluid retention and this may also lead to congestive heart failure. It is also, uh, these are also cytochrome P450 uh, met, being metabolized by, so it, uh, these drugs may be affected by cytochrome P450 enzyme inhibitors or inducers. Other drugs may cause diarrhea, myelosuppression, hepatotoxicity and rashes. The next group of anti-cancer drugs miscellaneous group 
are the epithelial uh, growth receptor inhibitors. The suffix here is the MAB or monoclonal antibodies. The main one which we are going to discuss is cetuximab. As we may be knowing, the growth factors are also acting on the tyrosine kinase receptors. And these growth factors are very much important in the cellular proliferation, growth, metastasis, angiogenesis, and other mechanisms involved in the development of cancers. So by inhibiting the epithelial growth factors, these drugs are very useful in the treatment of cancers. Now, cetuximab is used for colon cancer, for colorectal cancer, and also for the treatment of advanced head and neck cancer along with radiation. Uh, it's Major adverse effects include a hypersensitivity reaction upon infusion, skin rashes, and a hypomagnesemia, which is decreased levels of magnesium in the blood. The third group of miscellaneous group of anti-cancer drugs, the anti-VEGF receptor inhibitors, VEGF stands for vascular um, endothelial growth factor and this is another important uh, growth factor involved in angiogenesis. So these drugs, here we have uh, one drug which I mentioned and that is Vivacizumab. It, it binds to and prevents the binding of VEGFA to the VEGF receptors, vascular endothelial growth factor receptors. The main use of bevacuzumab is for the treatment of uh, metastatic uh, colorectal cancer and for metastatic breast cancer. The adverse effects of bevacuzumab include hypertension and uh, it may cause adverse effects, th um, thromboembolic adverse effects like uh, angina, myocardial infarction, stroke. These are arteriolar thromboembolic adverse effects. And then it may also cause gastric um, perforation may also cause proteinuria and wound healing complications. So this is um, all about the anti-cancer drugs. We have gone through from the beginning, we have gone through the principles of cancer chemotherapy in which we discussed um, some important terminology like induction uh, therapy, maintenance therapy, uh, adjuvant therapy, neoadjuvant therapy, and palliative therapy. Then we also discussed the cell cyclic specific and cell cyclic non specific anti cancer drugs, and with examples. Then we also went on to discuss the law kill hypothesis and its significance. And then the Common adverse effects of anti-cancer drugs were discussed and the mechanisms of resistance. Then we went on to classify the anti-cancer drugs and then we went on to discuss each of the major groups starting with the alkylating agents, then the anti-metabolites, then the plant alkaloids, vin christine, vin blastine, and then the anti-cancer antibiotics, the hormonal agents, and the miscellaneous group of anti-cancer drugs. And we also went through the regimens, some of the more important regimens used for 
the treatment of various cancers. Uh, last of all, a brief, a brief review of some MCQs. Uh, yes, this first one. So this is uh, the classification of anti-cancer drugs. The answer here is uh, anti-cancer antibiotic. The answer is doxorubicin. The answer is B. Uh, we know cyclophosphamide is an alkylating agent. Methotrexate is an anti-metabolite. Tamoxifen is an estrogen receptor antagonist. And vincristine is the plant vinca alkaloid. The next question, all of the following are correctly matched with their mechanism, except. So you know I do love except questions. They are, uh, however, not as asked in the examination, but they are extremely good for learning purposes. So here the answer is or should be cyclophosphamide has we mentioned it is an alkylating agent methotrexate is an anti-metabolite we have to repeat these things because then they can um, be deposited in your brain vincristine is a mitotic spindle poison doxorubicin if you remember is a topoisomerase 2 inhibitor and last of all, fluorouracil, it is not, not a purine analog, it is a pyrimidine analog. So this is the wrong statement. It is not a purine analog. It causes, if you remember, the thymine less death. The next question, all of the following drugs are correctly matched except this is concerning the adverse effects. So bleomycin has been discussed today. Uh, among the adverse effects, it does cause pulmonary fibrosis, just like amiodarone anti-arrhythmic drugs. Methotrexate, it causes myelosuppression, for which the antidote is leucovarine or folinic acid. Vincristine causes neurotoxicity, which includes uh, peripheral neuropathy, doxorubicin and donorubicin, they both are cardiotoxic for which we may have to give the antidote dextra, dextrazoxane. And last of all, fluorouracil, the major adverse effect is not SIADH. This is the wrong statement. Syndrome of inappropriate ADS secretion is caused by the vinca alkaloids, vincristine, vinblastine, and venorelbine. The next question, which of the following has significant drug interaction with allopyrinol? Uh, if you remember, uh, I mentioned that the purine analogs, mercaptopurine and azathioprine are metabolized by xanthine oxidase and allopyrinol is a xanthine oxidase inhibitor. So there may be an interaction between allopyrinol and these purine analogs and sometimes, sometimes allopyrinol is given deliberately with these drugs to increase their concentration. However, it may also lead to their increased adverse effects. The next question, a patient taking medications for acute lymphoblastic leukemia comes to you with complaint of pain and weakness in the knees. On examination, he has bilateral foot drop and loss of deep tendon reflexes. Which of the following drugs has most likely caused these adverse effects? This is a picture of peripheral neuropathy. So we have just mentioned one of these drugs is causing, is most likely to cause peripheral neuropathy. And the answer is, yes, E, vincristine. And uh, the last question, this is a case of a 33-year-old patient receiving chemotherapy for testicular carcinoma. 
and he developed signs of renal tubular damage. Which of the following is most likely to cause the nephrotoxicity? And yes, the answer is uh, cisplatin, used for uh, main use for testicular cancer. It does cause or it may cause nephrotoxicity. So with this, we end with the um, complete topic of anti-cancer drugs from the beginning and right up to the end of miscellaneous anti-cancer drugs. We will be going through some more um, discussion on these drugs soon. If you have any questions on any topic related to anti-cancer drugs, you can ask me on my channel or on my WhatsApp. Thank you very much.